couple quick announcements. Don't forget, we've got a um, new church directory that uh, should be over there on the uh, uh, the side table over there for you to check out. At least it was Wednesday night. I'll double check that to make sure all of the contact information, make sure your contact information is all up to date and good to go there. And then we do have uh, church outreach um, over on the lot next door. We've got food. Um, uh, Get ready to be distributed uh, uh, next, it'll be next Saturday, is that right? Yeah, the 20th. And so we'll meet at 1030 and we're doing the Kahlua pork. And so that, that goes super quick. It's like an hour and it's no matter how much we make, it's gone in, in an hour. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, I think the first time we made, I don't know, I think I made like probably five or no, at least four um, pork shoulders and it was gone less than an hour. And we did a follow-up a couple of weeks later with the same thing, and I think I did eight, and that was gone in an hour. And that's a lot of pork. You know, that's that's a whole bunch. And so um, we'll do um, you know anywhere between 100 to 200 plates easily uh, with that, and be able to pass out tracts and get the gospel out. That's the most important thing, and being able to um, uh, make sure people know that we're here and um, and uh, they have a place to come uh, to church to. And then also, we have got Paul Schwenke coming on the 21st, and so the day after um, the food distribution on Saturday and Sunday, uh, we'll have Brother Schwenke in. I've been in uh, contact with him uh, this week, and he's excited about coming and seeing what uh, all has been going on here, and then sharing uh, his ministry over the last couple of years, uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, come visit us again. And so the uh, plan for that uh, is uh, just a normal schedule on Sunday, with him having both Sunday school and the Sunday morning service and then he'll have Monday night 615, Tuesday night 615, and Wednesday night 615. And um, before the, uh, I'm sorry, um, we also will have um, uh, meals as well uh, for after the services. And so uh, if you're able to, to make it, uh, uh, it, it'd be a blessing if you can come and uh, hear Brother Schlanke for this week. I, he's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Bible preachers. And so if you say, well, Pastor, who do you listen to uh, throughout the week? Brother Schlanke would be one of those that, that I listen to. And so he's got such a deep understanding of, of the Bible. Um, he has written tons and tons and tons of books. Uh, last week, I think, I, or two weeks ago, I had the um, uh, resolution of being able to read a paper book. Um, I read, it seems like all digital today, and I said, this year I want to read actual book books, uh, paper book, and and uh, uh, God must have heard that in, in agreement with that because Brother Schwanke sent me his two new books right in the mail this week, and so I have that I have no excuse now. I even have the book in the, that I know I'm supposed to read, and so. Uh, but he will be coming with his books and everything else, and so be in prayer for that. And I would like to share also too, uh, just to get you thinking how important these things are when we have a speaker come in. Uh, as you know, you live here. Hawaii is not cheap. Uh, it is not cheap traveling here. It is not cheap putting people up and everything else. And and so he does have certain uh, different requirements in which he does um, uh, have a standard by where he does stay. Um, and so that's uh, essentially hotel. And so we do pay for his airfare. We pay for his hotel plus a love offering. And so when you factor and you add up all of these things, uh, you know, we're pushing $2,500, uh, if not more, uh, to be able to have him in uh, for those for those few days. And so it is a huge investment of the church uh, to be able to have a speaker in here, um, uh, and especially of Brother Schwanke. He is in, you know, 50 churches, I think, this year, and so he's in high demand, and it's a blessing that he carves out time specifically in his schedule to be able to come out here and uh, be able to have the revival uh, with us. And, um, and, you know, huge expense on his his part. And so pray over that. Give what you can uh, to be able to support that. We do budget for it. But as always, uh, it's a blessing when people give over and above to be able to support these things. And uh, next year, uh, by way of some planning, um, or possibly later in, in June, if he is around, uh, we have some, several others that have come through um, uh, over the years that I'd like to be able to have in. Those will be a little bit... Um, uh, a little bit less expensive because they'll share the expense 
with some other churches that are already in the islands. There's a couple of uh, missionaries, uh, I'm sorry, a couple of evangelists that come through every year or two, and they go to Ohana, they go to Friendship, and it's a much uh, a, a less uh, expensive uh, route to have them in uh, over here than having that mainland flight and everything else, but hotels are crazy right now, even VRBOs and everything else. and. And so uh, it is just super expensive. So with that, just to pray about what God would have me to give uh, towards that to be able to uh, support it. Um, that's really it by way of, of announcements here this morning. Does anybody have any prayer requests, anything at all we can be praying for as a Sunday school class? Ms. Beverly? My whole family is freezing in the dark in Oregon. Hey, we were freezing last night. I mean, it was cold, cold. We almost had to shut the windows. Everybody's got electric heat and stuff. Off. And it's like 10 or 12 below zero. My nephew and my son can't get any work because the roads are so icy and it's just really, really bad. My sister can't even see the net because it's too dark. All right. So pray for our sister's area there. Um, uh, generally, travel in general, uh, I guess. I didn't pay too much attention other than the what's going on in Buffalo, uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, apparently they had a, uh, 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 did that storm ever blow through or anything? Did they have the bad weather today? Or? I think it's today, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but I saw a picture of the stadium, and it was, it was under snow. I mean, it had, it was snowed in, uh, which I think, um, I mean, in been a Bills fan going on next year it'll be 50 years since birth I, I think I you know I was there wrapped in instead of swaddling clothes it was a Bill's jersey you know and 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 so Bill's fan all my life I can tell you I don't ever remember them canceling a game because of weather and I'm not ever um, I mean I'm sure it's happened but uh, I just don't remember it and so for them to be able to cancel a game had to be pretty bad and then uh, not to make light of uh, Miss Beverly's uh, sister and brother-in-law's situation there so pray for them in their uh, uh, need uh, the whole area <clears throat> and, and uh, just those reminders again how dependent and fragile we are and our needs of things and so um, Anybody else? Anything at all? Prayer requests? Yep, yeah, Eli? Okay. We had prayed for Mara and her travel last week. That went well. And so, <laughs> so yeah, and you can see she's still here. And so, had some flights canceled um, with that. And, it's funny when you uh, pray, God knows, and so he, he's like, yep, I, I'll do something about that eventually. And uh, so pray for her um, rescheduling of the, the flight back, and so God wanted her here for a, another week. Must have been. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes, Judy. Um, praise God. Uh, I saw a news yesterday uh, asking those uh, a couple, Filipino-American couple that died in Michigan. So okay. they left six kids. Pray for those six kids in the family. They were like ages two to nine years old. And that was a missionary family? No, they're, I think they went to a Catholic church okay. pastor. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's like a, somebody stole, a, I think, a, tra a truck or a car and mm -hmm. out, you know, in the office of them. Okay. They went for their uh, date night, I think. Okay. So pray for them and their family and, um, the, the kids all involved there, so pray for them. Anybody else? Anything at all? Amanda Ching, she's the uh, wife of Pastor Ching, Miranda, Miranda, Amanda, Larry, um, anyways, um, she had a big mess on her, with her, that she took a gun by out of the Friday, yes, so. Okay. Miranda Chang. Miranda. Yep. Right. Alright, so pray for the nothing to be pray, pray for her. it's a non event. Yeah. And so just an uncomfortable uh, couple of hours there, I'm sure. Anybody else? Anything at all? Pray for the revival coming up, obviously. And so pray for uh, visitors and you can do your part in that by inviting people out. 
and um, uh, the, so they can hear Brother Schwanke and be able to be blessed because of it. And um, anybody else, anything at all? Don't want to miss anything. All right, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will continue our little start of the year study on strengthening the home, which does nothing but strengthen the church. So as goes the home, so goes the church, and uh, we want to lay this foundation here at the, the beginning of the year. And so let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do love you again. We thank you for the ability to come to Sunday school and be able to lift up uh, uh, these prayer requests up to you, the praises, being able to glorify you for what you've done uh, since the last time we met. And the needs that have been presented, we think of the physical needs that we have, electricity, food, um, protection, shelter, uh, all of these things uh, uh, during uh, times of, of outage, like um, what the mainland's experiencing just really uh, presses upon us, our, our need for you so much more, um, our dependence upon you so much more. We ask that just a, a little bit of extra blessing and protection for Dwayne and Elizabeth here this morning, all of those that, uh, friends and family in those areas uh, affected. And we think of those that have lost loved ones, the, the accident this past week, leaving those children. Lord, I pray that you just um, get them into a place of safety, uh, another uh, family members or, or whoever it may be that may be able to love on them and encourage them. And, and um, uh, we also ask for uh, um, just uh, your special dealing in the unspokens. Uh, you know the, the need that is um, not voiced there. You know exactly uh, what uh, that that may be and what the, the the solution is whether it be peace or wisdom or just guidance or you to open up a, a, a door for us to be able to walk through Lord, i pray that you just in your timing provide that clear uh, we also ask uh, for uh, the non-event of um, miranda ching's uh, biopsy that, that just be nothing that uh, uh, nothing to worry about that they just didn't find anything with that and Lord, we'll just give you the honor and glory in advance for that. All these things in Christ's name, I pray. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to continue on the family. I do have two more copies for those that didn't get any last week. If there's anybody um, to be able to follow along. Did anybody not get any? All right. Does anybody not have theirs? All right. Very good. You have, just speak. You have yours? Okay. All right. All right. Be $50 each. <laughs> Gotta fundraise somehow. You gotta be able to do it. We'll, we'll give that the end. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, now, the million dollar question that I'll give that $50 back was where did we leave off last week? What was the last question that we answered? The G in marriage, what is it? Okay. So, in marriage, uh, what is a man to leave? His parents, right? Is that where we left off? That's okay. where I am. Okay. And so we had read. Uh, Genesis 2 15 through uh, 25 um, and uh, let's let me let me get back there real quick Genesis 2 just for the sake of time we'll just kind of pick up um, where we had left off with that thought pretty sure everybody was here um, and we'll go kind of verse by verse where it's uh, in in the lesson um, so a quick uh, uh, memory refresher. Who all has done this lesson before? Okay, so Beverly. Okay, uh, we got people over there. Great. And so about half. Abby, I think you've done it now four times. And so I've done, done it through and nothing new for her. Uh, I've been around just a little bit. And uh, we've gone through these things before. But it's good refresher. I was speaking with or exchanging messages with Brother Chauvin. And he was asking what slot we had wanted uh, for next year and so he gave me a whole bunch of dates and and uh, uh, Is able to select ultimately February because I'd like to it God's really put on my heart just by way of your understanding of what's going to be going on year after year um, is that January specifically in Sunday school um, I'd like to reserve to a, a back to the basics in some area starting just uh, reminders of these things that that are just fundamental to the faith things that that, that are basic because 
you know, it, it is great to love to go deep in the Bible. It, it is great to have a spiritual appetite for the bigger, uh, not the bigger, let me phrase that, that's the wrong word, uh, the deeper things uh, of understanding, maybe the more mature things, the, the meatier meat uh, of the Word of God. Uh, but it's also good in that, that you don't get rusty in the basics and the fundamentals. And so you say, well, Pastor, I've done this four times. Pastor, we've done this before. Great. You know what that means? You are not qualified to teach it. And so if you've done it more than once and you have an understanding of this, you are qualified to teach this, which is going to be another goal um, that we have over this 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 next year. Um, I'll say more about that in the, the business meeting coming up towards the end of the month there on that Wednesday night, I think on the uh, 24th or whatever day it was that I had said, um, is that our, our church does need, and I believe that um, you know we have a, a, a good foundation of people that have been here for a while that are, are ready to take on a, a, another challenge to be able to grow. Um, if you exercise, and, and I, you know I'm not talking about anything I know about, and if you exercise with the same weight, doing the same thing every time, eventually you're going to hit a plateau there and you're not going to grow until you take on some more weight until you maybe do some more repetitions but if you do the same thing over and over again with the same weight the same uh, uh, repetitions uh, eventually uh, it is uh, going to cause you essentially to plateau and such is the Christian Christian life I understand you need to come and you need to be trained and you need to start developing those good Christian uh, uh, faithful habits uh, that will take you to a, a, a different place in, in your walk. And part of that is being able to take on some more and more things, of which one of those uh, for you, if you've been blessed with that, is to be able to teach. But in that, um, uh, uh, in that thought, uh, you can be a teacher to anybody that doesn't know what you know. It doesn't require a great spiritual gift. It doesn't require a great speaking ability. All it is is a commitment and say, hey, I know something that would benefit that person over there. And then being willing to take the Word of God, a lesson like this, and just be able to, to, to work through it and be able to, to teach them. And so everybody can teach somebody something. And so here, uh, by way of uh, uh, letter E there, in marriage, what do the couple become? Uh, that is one flesh. And so in mar uh, marriage, the man leaves his parents, leaves his home uh, to establish his own home. And the thought behind that uh, is that, that um, he, he's no longer under that, at that authority uh, of uh, his father, of his parents, in submission to them. But rather, he is solely in submission to God. And so the husband, in order to lead his family, doesn't need that, that in-between authority anymore. He is supposed to develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God directly to be able to lead his family. And as I said in the lesson last week, all of this is under a great attack. All of it. Every part of it. We'll be talking um, during the message in Revelation. Um, I think in uh, last week, and definitely in this week's uh, uh, message, uh, puts some emphasis on the fact that Satan's here. He's walking to and fro. He is doing things, if not uh, directly in his presence in a certain spot, because he's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere. But his principles can. His influences can be everywhere. And I believe one of the things that that uh, uh, is really coming down on the generations today is this principles of making life just harder and harder to deal with today. Harder and harder to get out of the house. Harder and harder to uh, find uh, 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 good jobs and, and, and housing and all of those other things. And what does that force you into a situation to do things maybe not the same way that God have, had laid out or, or maybe a more challenging way of, of doing it. I was talking to Pastor Wood then um, for a while yesterday and uh, he was mentioning that same thing, how younger families are really struggling to be able
able to get out on their own over on Oahu. Really, really tough. If they're not military and have base housing or something like that provided to them, uh, uh, the younger families, they're all essentially moving away. And so he sees that as a, a, a problem as well. And all of that is just the situation of, uh, of today that we live in, that the cost of everything hasn't, um, uh, or I'm sorry, the wages of, of earnings and things like that has not gone up the same uh, as uh, uh, the expense of everything. But in that, let me say this, it never excuses you from doing things God's way. That no matter what the situation is out there in this world, there is always a path of doing it God's way. It may be super hard, but in that difficulty, it's super rewarding. Who in here, I'll speak in a general sense, has ever done anything super hard and feel the reward in go to Hilo Hospital, right? You work in Hilo Hospital. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. So I can tell you, when you do something sacrificially that's super hard, and you appreciate it, you you just you just savor it so much more than maybe something that was easily done, um, not handed to you, but was a little bit more natural to you. And so I can guarantee you, those that stick to the Bible way, uh, they're going to savor that victory. Uh, when that fruit uh, gets uh, uh, time to picking in their life and whenever that reward comes, right? And so in marriage, what do the couple become? Uh, that would be one flesh. And so uh, husband and wife uh, never should be pitted against each other. I understand there's personality differences. There are, uh, uh, you get two type, maybe two type A, Angela and I, uh, same way, you know, we, we're both, uh, or she's more stubborn than I am. I could say that now. Uh, she's not here right now. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it, so don't tell her I said that because she'll get mad at me. But, um, you get too type A to think that they're always right. Uh, and, and, you know, part of it is being able to recognize the strengths and the weaknesses of, of each other as that, that one flesh. And, and what I could drive home that I think is a kind of recurring thing by way of some counseling that I have uh, uh, been giving over the last uh, year specifically uh, is that husband and wife should never be against each other. You may have differing opinions. You may have differing you know, uh, uh, ways of doing something. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that you should never be against each other, that you're both working uh, for the, the betterment of your home. You're both working for the betterment, betterment of each other and not to get to that uh, point where there's that division and that uh, uh, place of being against each other. Because you can find yourself there pretty quick uh, and uh, it's a slippery slope. Um, Genesis uh, 3.16, Genesis 3.16, under the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. Again, marriage, you know, whatever. Uh, under the I'm just joking. You got to have a joke there a little bit. Uh, under the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And so here, um, not by way of... Uh, uh, you know, overwhelming penalty or punishment. Uh, God is establishing the authority structure of, of the home. Um, the, the wife, and we've gone over this before, and we'll go over it again uh, until Jesus come back. The, the, the wife is not a slave in the home. Uh, wife is an integral part of, of, of the home. Uh, most homes, if not every home, uh, would soon collapse uh, without uh, having that, that strong uh, mother, that strong wife, at, at home and so it takes everybody it takes the husband doing his role it takes the wife in her role it takes the children in their role and that is what the the family unit is and it is something when it's all clicking on all cylinders when everything is going right um, uh, that is a, a family ultimately that um, uh, glorifies God, worships God purely, and is also greatly used by the Lord as well within the, the local church. 
And so the, you, you talk about the, the sin, the fall that uh, had taken place. Uh, you have got the difficulties in, in childbirth. You have got the, the structure there of authority that came about uh, as a, a result of that. God's very orderly. He is very much into um, uh, uh, the organization of government, the organization of family, the organization of, of church. Everything has a place. Now, as I said at the beginning, Satan is disorderly. Everything that God wants to put in order, Satan has a plan multiple ways to be able to bring that into disarray. God has one order, one way of doing things. Satan is going to give you 35,000 different options to be able to introduce disorder uh, in, into your home to get everything out of, um, uh, to get you out of doing everything that God wants you to do in the order in which he, he wants you to do it. Um, Matthew chapter number 19, and so the, the in marriage, uh, there, where is the woman's desire? And that is to be to her husband. Uh, Matthew chapter number 19. Matthew, there you go. Imagine that. That's my middle name. Do you like Matthew or do you like Matt? Matthew. Matthew. Okay, he's like, Matt? That's informal. I'm formal. Matthew chapter number 19 and verse number 4. All right, Matthew 19 and verse number 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Again, it should be black and white right there, too, right there, male and female. Uh, and said, so I, I, I saw the funny joke online uh, about, um, you know, there being... Um, you know, 300 different genders out there and everything else and how all these companies are so adoptive of that. And then when you go to order a shirt on Amazon, it says male or female. <laughs> it still has the two right there, right? Um, and then verse number five, uh, kind of rabbit trail here. And said, for, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Um, in verse number six, wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What, what, uh, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And so God's um, plan is that marriage be permanent. And so that is God's plan that you make that commitment. Um, that uh, there be a uh, uh, that union that, that takes place that nobody uh, should separate which is why marriage should not be rushed into uh, uh, it is uh, far better to be uh, holding out praying for a mate than having to marry the wrong one right and so it, it is far better to remain single in prayer than, than to rush uh, marriage and so it shouldn't be anything that is rushed into right MJ? Amen. There we go. I'm redeeming that from last week. And so you got years, you got decades ahead of you, right? Is that better? All right. There you go. And so what uh, God does there, and then maybe some other time, it's not for the point uh, of uh, this lesson right now, but when you study, um, you know, biblical marriage today, you know, our thinking of, of marriage is, hey, I went down to the courthouse and I got my license and we did this and we did that and then I went to either the justice of the peace or went to the church and we went through uh, the, um, uh, the, the the marriage ceremony and, and we're married. Hey, a lot of the times, you know, the the relationships that, that are going on today, the shacking up and all that other stuff, God used that that union, once that, that intimacy takes place between that couple and they start living like they are married, hey, we gotta be careful of that in God's eyes. You gotta get through your, through your understanding here there's what the state says is a marriage, and there's what God says is, is a marriage. And God trumps the state every single time. 
And so you may have this thinking, what's well, like, well, you know, uh, it, uh, um, 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 you know, just shacking up, and the state doesn't do that, and it's all okay. Um, well, you gotta be careful because according to God's standards, that commitment uh, could be very, very, very different than what He views that relationship. Again, we'll save that for another time. But the shacking up thing was never part of God's plan uh, at all. And uh, people use it today to kind of work the system and everything else. And, and uh, uh, not part of God's plan and should not be part of uh, anything to do with the way that God's people uh, live their lives. And so you need to make that right. And so God's plan is that a couple come together in matrimony and then um, uh, they stay together through thick and thin. Those vows mean something and that commitment means something. Um, uh, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter number 7 and verse number... Anybody want to read this? Let's get involved here. Romans what? Romans 7, 1 through 3. Romans 7, 1 through 3. Seven, one, two, three. Go ye not further, for I speak to them that know the law, not that the law hath dominion over the man as long as he liveth. For the woman who hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, he is, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she still be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Amen. And so according to God's plan for marriage, the bond of marriage was to be broken only by death, right? And so um, you think, well, um, cases of, of uh, infidelity, you think of cases of um, just uh, a great amount of deterioration in the, uh, in, in the relationship. Um, God can overcome everything. Uh, that if you have got a couple that is there focused in on, on, on God, uh, he can overcome uh, whatever that may be. And I have uh, seen both sides. I've seen um, a divorce enter a Christian relationship where there was infidelity, where there was sep a great separation. Um, and then I've seen uh, cases where the, the couple counsel and the couple pray and they come together and, and uh, 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 glorify God in being able to honor that, that commitment no, no matter what. And we generally think of, hey, I could forgive just about anything, but if they cheat on me, that's one thing I can't forgive. Um, that's kind of the mentality that we uh, uh, approach things, but uh, uh, God uh, means that marriage to be um, uh, to be permanent and to overcome. And so uh, the point is, is to to give God a chance, see what He always can do, uh, because His intention for your marriage uh, is to be fulfilled unto and through uh, through death. And so that's that's His plan. Um, Hebrews thirteen four. Anybody want to read that? Anybody at all? Really can go ahead. Yeah, sure. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But for mongers and adulterers, God will judge. All right. And so what two things does God say are honorable? Uh, marriage and the bed undefiled. And so that is... Um, marriage is, is honorable that you're recognizing God. And what are you doing there? You're recognizing um, that God has created a mate for you, right? And so you realize that uh, from a wife's perspective, uh, as unbelievable as it is, God has created that man for you, right? And then from a husband, a man's perspective, he has uh, distinctly and uniquely uh, created and gifted a woman uh, to, to uh, complete you in order to uh, be able to be that, that, that one. And so when we, we, we get married, it is recognizing God's plan 
for two people, right? And so for the husband and the wife and bringing them them together, um, that is, is, is honorable. And then the relationships, the intimacy uh, that, that happens between that husband and, and wife as a married couple is honorable uh, as, as well. Um, and so we, if we read uh, verse number four, though, this is where it kind of gets into that whoremonger side of the shacking up. Um, and so uh, two coming together in marriage in that intimacy, God's all for that. Amen. And, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And so that out of marriage, the idea of shacking up, the idea of the premarital relationships, all of those things, God is not in favor of that. And there are dozens of reasons why the emotional side, the attachment side, the cloudiness that it, that it uh, presents and uh, how it changes maybe your, your judgment of, of things. And, and being able to, instead of thinking purely, uh, you start to think uh, fleshly that flesh takes over and so when you are there doing things God's way that's a blessing that brings honor to him you get married and then uh, you have uh, protected that um, uh, uh, purity uh, unto unto marriage both the man and and the woman equally that is something that is honorable and then you engage in that intimacy afterward that is honorable but when you do things out of order that's dishonorable unto God because you are not uh, 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 doing it his way uh, you're not uh, uh, doing things in a pure manner he wants things done purely that is a subject of revelation in these letters if you could boil down a, a sub theme to every single one of the letters that we are talking about Ephesus what was their problem they were busy right but they had lost their first love. They weren't doing it purely, right? And so the, 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 the same thing with um, uh, the, the, the next church, uh, the, uh, 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 Smyrna, that we talked about last week. They were there struggling. They were there in persecution. And the purity of doing it for the Lord would allow them to continue forward and keep plugging along unto uh, their time being up there. And so... Uh, a sub theme there is God is concerned about the purity of things and there is a purity in everything that he organizes and everything that he sets forth and so the whole concept of shacking up is uh, uh, impure uh, not something that that is honorable un unto God um, and is correctable I have seen more times uh, so many times uh, husband and wife come in to church I'm sorry, uh, a shacking up couple uh, comes into church and they both get, get saved. They get radically transformed. And then they're, well, what do we do? And well, you need to make that relationship right, right? And so I've seen uh, within uh, two weeks of, of uh, someone's um, uh, uh, salvation, uh, I've seen weddings take place. I've seen people say, no, nope, you know what? We, we are sick of doing things the wrong way, getting the wrong result. We want to do things God's way, and we just want to submit to it. And that's the right way. And so uh, it can happen, and it is a wonderful thing when it does happen. Um, that is something that is also prevalent a lot around here too is the concept of well we're just together but we haven't formally gone through uh, in marriage it was common practice in, in a lot of pagan cultures taught a, a common practice a lot here in Hawaii that there just wasn't that ceremony that there just wasn't that uh, um, making things official but in hey God's eyes uh, uh, you know you, you're not uh, uh, fooling him at all and so point is you, you want let me rephrase that you need God to bless that marriage. You need him to. And there is just but one way, and that is doing it his way. And so if you say, well, if we've done it all wrong, start doing it right. <laughs> you know? And so just from wherever you are, start doing it right. We can't go in the past and fix things. But I can fix my today. And I surely can make the decision to fix the tomorrow too. All sorts of people get kind of overwhelmed. And I'll finish with this thought, finish a little early this morning. Um, you get overwhelmed when I, I trusted Christ and I got it. 
that decision that I had made came with a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. But then, as I started living, kind of a weight came back on because I realized I wasn't doing things the right way. And I had to make decision, and I have to. It's not a pastor's arrived and he doesn't make any more decisions to grow. Every day, I get confronted with, hey, this is right in your life, or this is wrong in your life. This is a way that brings honor to God. This is a decision that dishonors God. Here's the way to fix it going forward, and here's the way to keep it broken. You got to make these decisions. And so every day you wake up, hey, what decisions does God have for me today to help me do things his way so I can glorify him, where I can bring honor to him, but then also from my perspective, be in that place of blessing, be in that place that, that God looks down, says, hey, this is right, this is honorable, this is how I want to do it, and here's your reward because of it. It could be peace, it could be financial, it could be protection, it could be whatever that reward may be. But I tell you what, doing things God's way, there's always some benefit. There's always something in which he will reward you for, for, for being faithful uh, to him. And so uh, just uh, some, some thoughts right there. And so you say, well, I didn't do it this way in the past. Hey, just don't do it that way today and don't do it tomorrow. Make the decision to do things God's way and he'll bless you because of it. And so let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do love you again. We thank you for this time to gather here this morning during Sunday school. And, and Lord, help us be stronger Christians. Help us be stronger families. And, and as we, 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 we do those things and as we grow in you, help us find our place in the church and exactly what you would have us to do. And uh, Lord, I pray that uh, uh, you just uh, speak to us through the message here this morning coming up and help us just be united in the word. All these things in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, right on time.